In his letter to the Hebrews, Paul speaks of how love looks in action. He writes, keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. We quite rightly tell children to be wary of strangers, but what happens when that fear spills over into the wider life of adult communities and we, we become too cautious of those we don't know or who behave differently or believe differently? The stranger in church, the refugee, the person behaving oddly, in our opinion, the convicted criminal, what then becomes of love or empathy? Because as Paul makes clear, love is mobilised through empathy. There, but for the grace of God, go I. The Greek word for love most commonly used in the scriptures is agape, unconditional love. John says, greater love have no man than this, to lay down his life for his friends. But that doesn't preclude love of others too. Indeed, we are challenged too to love our enemies. It's easy to love your friends, Jesus says. We all do that anyway. But I need you to love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. That is part of love. Not easy for sure, but Christian love, agape, is not just a direction of the heart, but of the head as well. It's an act of will. The challenge through prayer and practice and yes, discipline, is to learn how to love as God does. In that passage in Hebrews, which I read, Paul focuses our love in three particular directions, towards those we know and naturally sympathize with, our brothers and sisters, towards those we don't know, the stranger, and towards the, those we know or know of or think we know, but perhaps don't relate to as we could or should, if we recognize ourselves in them, the prisoner, the poor, the suffering. Firstly, he points us to the love of fellow believers in community. Keep on loving each other. We are family and we must continue to nurture and strengthen that bond if we are to find our way. But love also has a very powerful external dimension. As we show love to our brothers and sisters, that doesn't mean we should wall ourselves off as members of a distinct tribe. Love that stops, love that has perimeters, isn't love. So secondly, we are to show love to the stranger through the gifts of hospitality. In the first century, of course, hospitality was a very practical virtue because public places were dodgy places. And Paul reminds us that when we are hospitable, we too are blessed we may entertain angels without knowing it. Thirdly, we must love those in prison, those suffering, as though that might be us. How much more would we care for the poor if we were ever hungry? Or about the refugee, if we were the stranger in a boat seeking safety in a foreign land, abused and mistrusted? Hence the golden rule, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That is the sum of the law. Christian love is not the pink, fluffy stuff of Valentine's Day. It's an act of the will to try in all ways and in all situations to love after the example of Jesus Christ himself.